welcome to Red Ted Art. Today we're going to show you how to make these God's Eye weaving projects. Now we first made these a few years ago um, on Red Ted Art as part of a project at school. Well actually we made them at home first and then we went into school and made them with lots of four and five year olds. So actually this is a really good craft to get younger kids interested but I think all age groups enjoy it. It's just very mesmerising and very sort of um, wow, just calming. And you can use make it using um, sticks like this. Uh, we've used um, literally lollipop sticks that we've washed and cleaned and we've also used in the past um, we used a horse chestnut in the middle and stuck twigs out of outside all the way around it and then lots of intricate weaving so you know we're doing with two today but you can use three across it and it just gets a nice pattern or a slightly different pattern and really you just give it a go and see what works for you um, so yes, let's get started. Have I said yet subscribe to the channel? Subscribe to the channel. We want to see you here again soon. So what you need is at least two sticks. I do think using um, several sticks looks really nice as well, but it's totally your own choice of how you start it. Also, if you're doing it with younger kids, um, we didn't on this one, but you might want to glue your two uh, craft sticks together first, and then you've got sort of a, a more rigid frame to work with, but it, you don't have to. So if you're using two sticks like this, these are lovely, lovely, lovely um, beechwood sticks. You basically just need to um, secure it in place by wrapping it around a few times like this. Get it in nice and secure. And that'll do. Then you kind of rotate it, decide which side you want to be as your top and which side is your bottom. I think I'm going to turn this around a little bit and have this as my top. So the first thing you need to do, and it doesn't really matter if you go over or under, as long as you keep the same all the way around. So I'm going to go round and over, round and over, round and over. Can you see that? So I'm going round once and round and in a minute you'll start seeing a pattern emerging round now as I mentioned I first did this about two and a half years ago with my son's then reception class so they're four and five year olds and we did it in groups of six and of course some of them needed a little bit more help than others but also at the time my daughter was three, so she did it with us as well at age three. And then when I did it with her again this weekend, she made that one. She just got the hang of it so quickly. So really it is quite in you know, a little bit tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, really, really easy. So do you, can you see, I'm literally just going round like that. It's ideal if you, as you go round, you line them up a little bit. So this thread goes there. But again, my daughter, who's a little bit younger, kind of overlapped a little bit and it still looks nice. So you don't need to worry too much about how neat it is. Right, I think that's enough of the, the white. Let's get some scissors. I forgot them. Actually, I have some in the kitchen drawer. Just going to cut it. I'm going to switch up over to my next colour. I'm going to use this light pink. And literally all you do is just knot it and on you go. Now the thing is you want to, this is going to, this is my front, so as you knot it, it's good if you can get the knot positioned to go behind, you know, pointing down like that, and then you go round again. And then if you're really clever, really organised, you can, as you go round, basically wrap this around. So, you know, this is my string, string you can just wrap around that as well but to be honest it really doesn't matter it's just sort of a way of neatening up all the loose ends but again on my daughter's one you know you can see the ends a little bit but it doesn't matter so let's keep going around so this time the thread's a little bit thinner and it's going to take me a little bit longer but to be honest such a quick craft you almost think oh i want to do another one so it doesn't matter too much if your thread's a bit thinner Of course, I'm doing it a little bit faster than you would. It will maybe take you a little bit longer. Just because um, it's practice, isn't it? And like I like to say to my children, I've been practicing for years. It's 
especially when they say, Mummy, why are you so good at, I don't know, sewing? And I say, well, I've been sewing for a lot longer than you. So, there we go, keep going until you want to switch colours, I think I'll do another few, I quite like this pink, and then I've got a nice bright pink to switch to, there we go, I think I'm going to switch now. So all you need really is a little bit of wool. It's nice to have a couple of colours. Obviously it's helpful to have scissors um, and then some sticks or lolly sticks. So again, if you're going on holiday and you fancy making these, just pack a couple of different couples of wool in your suitcase and, you know, have a go whilst you're out, oh, oh, away. Oh, didn't get my knot in the right place there, did I? After I said, be careful where you get your knot. And then I didn't listen to myself, did I? I'm just going to push it behind. This is a really fabulous pink, this one. I love this. So it's slightly out of line because of that knot. There we go. I could do this all day. Never mind working on Facebook and doing all these other things. Let's just do some weaving. And I'm going to pop the link below to where I did step-by-step -step photos. And you can also see what it looks like if you use more than two sticks. It looks really lovely. And the ones with the um, horse chest nuts, the conkers in the middle, I think are just so tactile and beautiful. The colours we used were a bit more earthy, so they were good for autumn. And also when you hang these in the window or on the w ceilings, uh, not ceilings, on the wall, apparently conkers ward off spiders. That's really good spider repellent, apparently. But I think these bright colours are lovely for summer, so it's a really good summer camp activity, I think. And basically you keep going until you think you've done enough. I'm going to do a few more. And then I'll show you how to finish it off. Right. Okay, let's go. See, I keep saying, right, let's go. And then I'm like, oh no, just a tiny bit more. One more, one more. Because it just looks so nice. Okay, so... I cut a longish piece off. The reason why a longish piece is good is because then you've got some thread for hanging. Like with some of these ones, I made my threads a bit too short. But if you do it a bit longer like this, then you've got enough thread for hanging. And then to finish it off, all I do is, is wrap it round and loop it through. So it's kind of like your tiny little knot. Let me see. And then just tighten it like that. I'm going to do another one, wrap it around again, just to make sure it doesn't come undone. And one more. Here we go. And there you have, oh, trim these off. Trim these off that. There we go, trimmed it off, push it into place, and there you have a very quick and easy God's Eye weaving how-to. So if you want to look at it in detail, I love the textures. Um, hope you enjoyed it, hope you have a go, and hopefully also subscribe to the channel and see you here again soon. Bye!